Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to God for the opportunity we have again for us to fellowship together and break the bread of life. I, um, uh, every time we have this opportunity like this, I, I give thanks to God for the privilege because it's not a right, it's a privilege that the Lord has given to us to be able to fellowship together. And the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, it said, um, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. In John chapter 4, Jesus speaking from verse 23 and 24, Jesus said the Father is spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible speaking by uh, through um, Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, I mean chapter 3 in verse 3. Paul says we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. So we are the fulfillment of the Father's desire to worship him in spirit as is his spirit. Praise God. And so there's no distance at all in the realm of the spirit. Wherever you're watching this uh, uh, telecast from right now, I bet you in Jesus' name, you will never be the same again. And the Lord is with you the way he's with us right here in the name of Jesus. All right. Um, you know, we'll never start until I ask that you share this truth. You know, they are free. You know, share it. You know, tag somebody with it. Call somebody and let's do this together in the name of Jesus. Even as we shoot right now. All right. Let's head for it. I want to speak about something that, the, uh, that is very strong in my heart, you know, tonight. Uh, and I believe that it's going to be a blessing to almost every, um, I mean, literally every one of us. Um, I wrote something here. I said, we are living in a very trying times. The times that we live right now, these the days that we live now, it's a very trying times. Uh, and I say it's a time the Bible refers to as perilous times. You know, so you will see that in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, uh, that he put it up. Let's, let's go through that together. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Look at what the Bible says. He said, to know also. The, I mean, he said, this know also. So there's a knowing that the Lord wants us to have about this period that we are living in. in it, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And of course, you and I know that we are not only living in the last days, we are living in the last days of the last day. You know? That's, what we're, that's the period we're living in right now. And the Bible said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. The word perilous, another word for perilous um, is the word terrible. You know, in the last days, the, it, will, it will be terrible. Things will be very terrible. You know, uh, not only terrible, things will be dangerous or difficult. So we are living in, in a challenging days, you know, days that are unpredictable, more or less. Unpredictable, unpredictability is what is governing these last days. I mean, all you have to do is look, you don't have to look far. Look around you. You will see, all you see in the world are challenges, difficulties, troubles, terrible things happening here and there, you know all over everywhere there is no country on earth that you can anybody can say now that he wants to run to because it's the safest country or it's a safe country there's no safe country anywhere you know and it's a sign of the days in which we are living in the bible calls it perilous times terrible times dangerous times so um in dangerous times like this um uh, the primary purpose of these times uh, are primarily to test individuals' heart. I'm going to say that again. The reason for these last days, perilous times, dangerous times, difficult times, is to test everyone's heart. You know, to test everyone's heart. 
of what the heart is made of and where the heart is. You, you know, everybody says they are Christian. Everybody says they are believers. That they love God. They are serving God. You know, some people say they fear God. Every, you know, everybody's professing whatever. And then Sunday morning, everybody's rushing to church. You see, but only God sees the heart of everybody. He knows where everybody's heart is. He knows where your heart is. Not just what you say with your mouth. Not just what I say with my mouth. But where my heart belongs. Where my heart stands. God, only God knows. So, this period, one of the, among, among so many other reasons for this period, is to reveal the heart of everyone. These dangerous times, these difficult times, these perilous times will reveal everyone's heart where their heart truly is, including ministers. A lot of ministers, because of this difficult period, are now beginning to deviate, add all kinds of things because they want to make sure they get money out of people. Say, so put your money in, take an envelope, put money inside, lift it up. And say, my father, my father, in the name of Jesus, every enemy that is pursuing me, I use this covenant offering to damage it. How can you use covenant offering to damage whatever? It is the name of Jesus that is given to us. But because the times are difficult, the heart of ministers are beginning to be revealed. Which direction their heart belongs to whom they are serving. So this period is a revelatory period for the heart of men. Woo! So you need to understand what is going on before the return of the Lord Jesus. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? That is a question the Lord is asking everybody. Where is your heart? As a man of God, where is your heart? As a leader in the church, as a Christian uh, uh, leader, as a political leader, in whatever area you are called to serve by God, because even if you are serving a man, you, as the Bible says, you do it as unto, the, as unto the Lord. So the Bible, see, so God is giving everybody the opportunity to re-examine and re uh, evaluate where and what is dominant in our heart and the best time to know at this period Woo! Amagada yada. this period revealing the heart of men the heart of men a lot of people are turning into prophetic giving fake prophecies because they want to uh, uh, they have calculated taking calculator to punch if 50 people give X, Y, Z, X, Y, X, Y, Z, this is amount, this uh, Thursday service, or this Sunday service, you know, or this uh, Monday service, you get X, Y, Z. People's heart are not primarily depending on Jesus for provision. So their heart is set on their human calculation on how to maneuver the people. How to wind the people, how to trick the people to get money out of them. You know, so you see that many pastors, the, the message, when they are preparing message to preach, they are preparing message that will enable the people to bring out money, to give good offering, to pay good tithe, to bring their to, to make pledges. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? So watch this as we go on. So, uh, amplified translation. Put amplified translation of this of this Second uh, Timothy chapter three verse verse one. What? what, what let me sh let me read amplified translation to you. Because the heart of everybody will be revealed before Jesus. We will look. You will know where your heart is before Jesus comes. So when the Lord comes, it's not going to be a surprise. You know that your heart has not been with Him. You know it, it baffles me. I, I wonder when Jesus said, you, you know, then shall He say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because a lot of people are not actually born again. They're not actually of God. You know? 
They're just out there for their belly sake. And then others are there for fame, popularity. They want crowd so that they can say that, you know, I'm a big boy. I'm a big man of God. You know, something is wrong. Something is fundamentally wrong in the church today. And this perilous period, dangerous period, is to reveal the heart of everyone. So look at what tra Amplified Translation says. He said, but understand this. Understand this. That the last days, in the last days, I mean, uh, in the last days will come certain perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. Jesus, Jesus himself said the same thing. Book in James of uh, Luke 21 verse 26. I'm still trying to build this thing. King James says in Luke 21 verse 26. Watch what King James says. This, and this is Jesus talking. In the, in, in the King James Version here. This is Jesus himself talking. Jesus said, men's heart will fail them. You see, so we are entering a period, or we have, not that we are entering, we have entered a period, a season, where men's heart will, uh, are failing them. Which means, this is the reason people are having high blood pressure. A man of God is constantly having headache. A man of God is not Together, he's not able to hold things together. This period is shaking him or her to, to the root of his foundation. Church members are losing grip and control of the ability to continue in their faith. Jesus said, we have entered into a season where the heart of men will fail them. And it's already failing. People are having stroke. People are having heart attack. People are having high blood pressure, hypertension. They are becoming so hypertensive. A lot of people are having all kinds of uh, uh, sleeplessness. To, to sleep in the night is becoming a challenge for believers. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the devil that is trying to unseat your heart in faith in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you understanding of this teaching tonight. Or whatever the time, wherever you are watching. The time we are living in is testing the heart of men. So what people put their trust in, apart from Jesus, they are all failing. All those things are failing. If your trust is in mantu, because your bishop, your pastor, your geo gave you mantu to be carrying, it will fail you in these last days. Mantu is failing. Carrying mantle is no more the solution. Faith inside mantle is becoming a failure right now. I'm telling you. Doing salt covenant is, not, is a failure right now. There is no power in salt covenant anymore. No power. So the heart of men is failing them. Because they are doing salt covenant services, yet the enemy is triumphing over them. The enemy is having a field day over the people of God. The Holy Ghost sent me to you tonight. Or whatever the time is that you are watching. The Holy Ghost sent me to you. Get out of all those things that are calling your heart away from Jesus. You need to redirect your heart back to Jesus. You need to call back your heart to Jesus. Don't go back into what you, are, what you came out of. Don't go back into it. These are not the days, the time for you to fall back into what the Lord Jesus took you out of. What the, you, you know yourself that these people are in occult. They are practicing witchcraft. But because there is money in it, you are turning a blind eye, a blind eye to the truth and putting your hand and self into ungodly things so as to, to satisfy your stomach. The Bible says food for the belly and the belly for food. He said the two of them shall be destroyed eventually. You are not called to serve your belly. You are called for the Lord Jesus Christ. And to come into union with him. Because he is able to supply all your need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So Jesus said. The heart of men will fail them. And seriously. That's the time we are living right now. That's the time we are living now. Hey. And so because. Men's heart are failing them. And they are not seeing results as they expect. 
It's not that the result is not there. The result is there. Positive result. Peaceful result. Glorious result. From heaven itself. Is there. But the truth is this. A man's heart will only be where his treasure is. And it is your heart God answers. Not just your mouth. Not just your words. Your heart. He answers your heart. He said, for with the heart, man believe it. In Romans chapter 10, for with the heart, man believe it. It is your heart God listens to. Not just your mouth. Your heart. What is your heart saying? Where is your heart? Because it is with the heart that man believe it. The heart is where the action is and comes from. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that by the time we are done in this our fellowship, in this episode, by the grace of our Lord Jesus, your heart will be strongly pulled by the love of God to turn once again towards Jesus and rest it on the finished work of Jesus by having confidence in his ability to sustain you against all odds. And I mean that, against all odds. So, Jesus speaking, he said in Matthew 24, verse 10, that he put Matthew 24, verse 10. Because a lot of, a lot of people are, are no longer trusting that Jesus can take care of them. That's why you see precious daughters of God are going into prostitution. Why? Why would you want to go into prostitution? Because your heart is so convinced that to wait on Jesus is a waste. It's not. The Bible said he that will come will come. And he will not tarry. He will not fail. He has never failed. Jesus has never failed. Our men, some of our youth, are going to arm robbery. They are, because they, they, they don't believe that Jesus can make a way out of no way. And because they are, their heart is failing to trust in, the, uh, in God's ability because of the conditions and the circumstance of the nation. Why? Why will you take to arm robbery? Why? Why will you want to deprive somebody else of their own good? Why? Why? Look. Known unto God, the Bible said that all his works from the beginning. I'm telling you. There is nothing you will ever need that God has not made provision for. Nothing. The, look at Jesus. Look at what Jesus said. And then shall many be offended. And that's the characteristics of this period. Of these last days. Offense. Ah. The way people get offended these days is alarming. You are trying to advise somebody who gets offended. Husband is getting offended at the wife at the slightest things. Wives are getting offended at their husband and moving out of the house at the slightest provocation. Is it father and children? Mother and children? Children and their parents? People and, their, uh, and the government? The, the way people have become so sensitive that offense easily is generated. It's alarming. But Jesus said it is one of the products of the signs of the last days. So we shouldn't be surprised. We're not surprised. The rate at which people get offended, the rate at which people are not willing to submit themselves to counsel, to advice, to tutelage, to mentoring. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. Those are, they are all part of the activities of these difficult periods that we are living in. You see, when you understand what this period is all about, then you can graciously prepare your heart not to fall victim to the uh, 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 devices of the devil. Because the devil in these last days is all out. Lucifer is all out in these last days. But I trust the Lord Jesus that the grace of God will single you and I out of every satanic attempt and attack to unseat Jesus in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, he said, then shall many, these are the effects of these last days. Many shall be offended. Offense is every, look, 
If there is one thing that is rampant now in these last days, it's offense. I'm telling you. The way people get offended, you will see that the de- I mean, the devil is working full time. This period. I'm not here to glorify the devil. I'm I'm here to help you to see so that you can navigate your way properly. David said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. So that thou being with me, I need to submit to, to help me navigate. Navigate this period. Navigate this season. Because, (laughs) he said, you have to put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand. So to be able to withstand is the reason for this teaching. So Jesus said, then shall many be offended. And look at the next thing. And shall betray one another. So offense and betrayer will be running side by side in these last days. He said, and they shall hate one another. Ah! Look. You and I need to do everything possible to allow the spirit of God that is living in us to think through us to flow through us we have to learn to yield to the holy spirit at every time and not to live by our emotions not to live by our feelings feelings comes and goes emotions comes and goes that's why a believer is not supposed to live by his feelings the believer lives by faith he said for the just shall live by faith that's the, thing. That's the thing. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he said, For the just shall live by faith. That's the, the believer must live by faith. By faith. By faith. Not by your feeling. Eh, I don't feel. Look, 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 at, look, look, uh, look at what he said to me. Look at what he did to me. Uh, it, it makes me feel bad. No. You are supposed to die to your feelings. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, you should reckon yourself dead indeed. You should reckon yourself dead. Because in this last day, the devil is all out. And he's shooting on every side. Trying to see somebody he can ruin. Somebody he can derail. And you and I will not be part of that somebody in the name of Jesus. And also for us not to be, we need to carefully re-examine and re-evaluate where our heart is. So Jesus said the signs, even though the days will be very difficult. Things are going to be very, uh, there will be, try, there'll be uh, trying times, and we are in those trying times. And there are going to be difficulties, challenges, perilous times. Jesus said, the expression of all those things will be offense. Number two, it will be, look at it, betraying or betrayer of one another. People will be betraying themselves. Integrity will be very far. People will say yes today, tomorrow they will say no. And then there will be so much hatred. And that is what is going on. Because those are the instruments the devil is using to characterize uh, or, or to work his activities. You know? So we, if you can learn not to live by your feelings. Ah! If you can learn to die to your feelings, emotions. Because the Bible said in Colossians that we are dead. A dead man does not feel pain. A dead man does not feel abuse. A dead dead man does not feel betrayed. A dead man does not feel, he doesn't feel. So the Bible said you and I should consider, we should reckon ourselves dead indeed. We should reckon it. We should be convinced. We should tell ourselves I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead to my feelings. I'm dead to betrayal. I'm dead to offense. I'm dead to hatred. I'm dead to bitterness. I'm dead to malice. I'm dead to all these things. Because until you, are, you, you die to them and consciously tell yourself that you are dead to those things in the name of Jesus Christ, the devil will eventually use them as tools. So in order for the devil not to use them as tools, that's why the Lord said we should be dead or we should, be, we should consider ourselves dead to it. It's not everything that should offend you. In these last days. No. 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 Offense should never, rec- should never be recorded concerning you. In these last days. 
Offense is for babes. Babes. Anyway, I got to run because of time. Woo, I wish I had enough time to deal on that. Because the Bible said in 1 John, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Let me show you 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He said, be sober. The word sober means be at a lot. Gain control of your, of your mind. Be in charge of your mind. The Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. So do everything to live in, quote and unquote, sound mind. Your mind should be sound at all times. Your judgment should be sound. That's why you are a child of God. That's why you have the wisdom of God inside of you. You are not just anybody. You are not anybody. You have the wisdom of God inside of you. You should, you should be able with soundness of mind to be able to judge conditions, judge situations, judge circumstance. You know, you shouldn't be like the world or the people in the world who are without God. Don't be like that. You are not like that. You are not like that. You have the Holy Ghost inside of you. He said, be sober. Be in charge of your mind. You know, take charge. Don't, don't let your mind be, become beclouded. No, be in charge of it. And the best way to keep your mind sound, Isaiah speaking by the Spirit of God, he said, that will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, on, God, on Jesus. So, the, the best way to keep a sound mind is to keep your mind steady, steady on Jesus. And that has to do with faith. It has to do with faith. Stay your mind on Jesus. Stay your mind on, no matter what, stay your mind on Jesus. If your mind is on Jesus, the only thing you will express is love and joy. Love and joy. Those are the two things you will express. Love and joy. Love, because the love of God is poured out into our heart. Can't you see? So your heart is filled with the love of God. Number two. Woo! He said, rejoice. Rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. He said, for me, it is not grievous. He said, but for you, it is safe. Can't you see? Joy provides safety, supernatural safety. So Isaiah speaking in Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name. Isaiah speaking said, you shall go out with joy. He said, go out with joy. No matter what happens, go out with joy. He said, when you go out with joy, you will be led forth with peace. Peace will be your escort. That means no matter what was mobilized by the forces of darkness against you, whether financially, uh, maritally, business, whatever, peace. He said you'll be led forth with peace. Peace will tell them, Shh, you can't disturb this one. No, no, no. You can't unseat rest for him. No, 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 you can't. He said, then the trees of the field shall, uh, the, the, the mountains and the hills shall burst forth into singing for your sake. And the trees of the field, which represent human beings, will clap their hands. If you are led forth with peace. Once your mind, if you want your mind sound, stay it on Jesus. Once your mind is stayed consistently on Jesus, two things you will exhibit, you will demonstrate, you will manifest. It's love and joy. Woo! Look at him. He said, that will keep him in perfect peace. He didn't say you will keep yourself in perfect. He will keep you. Don't worry about the peace. Don't worry. He, about the keeping. He will keep you. I'm telling you. But look at the condition. Whose mind he stayed on thee. Because he trusts in thee. Are you seeing him? Once your mind is stayed on him. And because you trust. To, for your mind to be stayed on him means... You have decided to rest your life in Jesus. All these other nonsense, the trivial things don't move you no more. You don't, they, they, you know, they, they don't move you no more. Why? Because the devil, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, put that 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, please. Because the devil, the enemy, is going about looking for somebody to derail. He's looking for somebody to derail. He won't derail you. That's why the Holy Ghost sent me to you right now. You will not be derailed. We are living in a very slippery period. In a very slippery times. He said, be sober. Once you become sober, you have control of your mind. He said, be vigilant. 
to me to be 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 a, be, a, be alert. Woo! Be awake spiritually. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, he said, Awake thou that sleepest. Arise from among the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. He will give you light. He will give you understanding. Wake up, spiritually speaking, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at He said, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, your enemy, the devil. So the devil is our enemy. As a roaring lion, walk it about, seek it. The, word, the meaning of seeking is that he doesn't know who, actually. The devil does not know who. So he's seeking whom he may devour, whom he may dissuade, distract, so that he can eventually destroy. Do you understand that? The devil is looking for somebody. And you know he's a spirit. And spirits don't get tired. So he goes to and fro. You know, we do split second. The devil is in America. We do split second. He's back in Africa. We do split second. He's in China. We do split because there's no distance in the name of the spirit. Uh, but the devil cannot be in the same place. I mean, in, in every place at the same time. He can't. But he can run. That's why he runs to and fro. He's always moving. Because in the realm of the spirit, they don't go through transport. They don't, they, they don't dissipate energy to travel. No. It's just like that. In, at the snap of the finger, you have translated from one place to another. So the devil does not know who actually he should face to derail in these last days. But he's seeking for. He's looking for. For him not to make you the person. That's why the Holy Ghost is asking you to put your heart in the right place. Thank you, precious Father. Woo! So once the devil is set to go after anybody, any individual, whether born again or not, you know, I feel very thirsty right, right now, so I need to put some more water. Once the devil is set against anybody, once, it's, once the, the, the devil has targeted anybody, and someone say, no, the devil can't target me. I'm in Christ. I agree. You are in Christ. For him not to target you successfully is why I'm teaching this. Because the devil can target anybody. So once the devil targets anybody to devour the person, he begins to work on that person's case. I want to show you the instrument with which he does that. To punish the devil. Let me show you the instrument with which the devil does that. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. Put NIV translation. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. Watch this. Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32. NIV translation. Everybody, watch. Look at this. He said, get rid of all bitterness. Emegwe. Elutebedege sidi abada. Abura Daga. Because the devil is on the loose. He's looking for somebody to devour. He's looking for somebody to feast on. He said, get rid of all bitterness. Stop being bitter. What are you doing with bitterness? He said, not just bitterness. He said, get rid of rage and anger. You know when some people, anger is the work of emotion. All of them, whether bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, long, uh, along with uh, every form of malice, the, all these things are the works of emotions. He said, get rid of them. That's why I told you before. Don't live by your emotion. Get rid of bitterness. He said, get rid of rage. Why are you angry? Get rid of anger. What? As a matter of fact, the, the preacher said, in, in the book of Proverbs, he said, anger dwelleth in the bosom of a fool. You know, some people, you, see, you hear them, they'll be proud. He said, don't, don't try me. Because once I, once I get, I know myself, when I get angry, when I get angry, what I will do, what I will say, what do, look, you won't like me. When I, it's a fool. That's a fool that he's talking. That's a fool. Because the Bible said, anger dwelleth in the bosom of a fool. And so, he's advertising himself or herself as a fool. So that one, the devil can easily 
locate and devour. It can easily locate and derail. So the Bible said, the instrument the devil uses to get anybody, primarily, is bitterness. Refuse to be bitter. No matter what. Because bitterness can kill progress. Bitterness can destroy progress. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it defiles. Bitterness defiles. Why are you bitter? Why do you allow yourself to be bitter? Don't get to that point where you are bitter. Don't do that. Don't let anything get you to the point where you become bitter. I don't care whatever the thing is under the sun. Uh, if you know what this person, look, uh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Just push that bitterness out immediately. Don't let it stay. Your heart is too precious for bitterness to stay in your heart. Bitterness is not one of the fruit of the spirit. So it shouldn't be there. It defiles. It, me it messes up everything. It collapses things. Bitterness. As a matter of fact, the Bible said it's a root. It is from bitterness. Every other thing falls. Every other thing happens. When a heart is bitter, one of the things that the heart produces, the first thing the heart produces, the heart of a bitter man or woman, the first, one of the first things that heart produces is sickness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sickness, all kinds of diseases will start growing. We start spreading. Haven't you heard that a merry heart doeth good as medicine? That when there is joy in your heart, you know, it, it translates into medicine for health, sound health for your body. So the absence of joy, which is bitterness, will, will, will give birth, in other words, to sickness, diseases. You know, I've seen some people who are so bitter. They lost control of life. I know of people who are so bitter that they, 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 they came to the end of progress. The thing called progress in life for themselves and their families. I've seen people, as a matter of fact, if there is, there is only one thing, there is only one thing that can render the grace of God useless in the life of a child of God, it is bitterness. The only thing that can render the grace of God useless I'm talking about the workings of the grace of God. The only one thing that can render the grace of God useless, not to function in work, in working, in the life of a child of God, is bitterness. You, you see, what, what cancer does to the body is what bitterness does to grace. What, it, 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 it starts gradually. You know, bitterness starts gradually. And as it begins to take root, he start eating into the grace of God that the person is enjoying. But the person would not know. The person wouldn't know. You know, because it doesn't happen overnight. It happens slowly and steadily. As he's eating, he's growing, festing, you know, he's growing and expanding until it eats deep into the grace of God and then the person begins to come on that his or her human energy to get things done, to pray becomes difficult, to, 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 to read the Bible becomes difficult. The things that ne uh, necessarily used to happen freely because of the workings of the grace of God becomes a challenge. So God said, whatever you do, get rid of bitterness because it will eat up the grace of God that is in you and on you. Before you know it, you are stripped. The person is stripped naked. So not to be spiritually stripped naked of the grace of God, get rid of bitterness. The Bible said the heart knows its own offense or it knows its own bitterness. You know in your heart who and who has offended you. You know in your heart what and what is making you bitter. You know in your heart what and what the thing is. That is affecting you. Get rid of it. In the name of Jesus. I, 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 I adjure you. I beg you. I plead with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get rid of bitterness. 
Get rid of it. Let it go. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger. Get rid of brawling. Get rid of slander. Don't slander people. Some people take pleasure in spoiling people to other people. I don't know what good that gives you. You know, some people when they want to leave a place, a society, an organization, a, you know, a fellowship, they don't want because they don't want to live alone. They begin to poison other people's mind, other people's heart, because they want to go with as many people so that they can feel fulfilled that they broke down the place or empty the place. That is that is satanic. That is the work of the devil. The work, get rid of it. Get rid of it. You are too big for that. You are better than that. Get rid of it because the devil, the adversary is going about looking for who has his own tools he can use. The devil is going about. You know, once you can get rid of bitterness, anger, and malice, believe me, you will begin to live above every workings of the devil. You will begin to live higher and above every working of the devil. And I mean that. If you can get rid of bitterness, anger, and malice in your heart, you have automatically stepped into the realm where you start living bigger, higher, and above all the workings of the devil. Every other thing the devil does will be a waste of time on his, on his own part. It will be a waste of time. I've said it before. I've taught it, taught it in se on several occasions. I said Christianity is like a ladder. The first part of it is salvation. Which is grace. And then you come into faith. But the last part of the ladder, the last part, the topmost part of the ladder is love. You didn't hear me. It's love. That is the highest work in Christianity. Love. And that is the level majority of people are yet to come into. It's not that you don't have love. You, of course, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, God has poured his love into our heart by the Holy Spirit. But to walk, to walk, W-A-L-K, W-A-L-K is the problem. To walk in love is the problem. So many people are struggling to walk in love. Ah! One of these days we're going to do a teaching on walking in love, you know. Because the Bible says, oh, no man, nothing except love. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter how bad the person is. It doesn't matter how ugly the person is. It doesn't matter what the person has done. He said, you owe them love. You owe them love. And in 1 John chapter 4, he said, anyone who walks in love or who dwells in love dwells in God. Anyone who dwells in love dwells in God. If you are not dwelling or walking in love, you are not dwelling and walking in God. Why? In verse 8, it says, for God is love. <laughs> God is love. <laughs> Let me show you something. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, put, uh, uh, ESV translation, quickly. ESV translation. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Let's look at this. Watch this. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Let's, we need to read it again. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Look, whether you are prepared though, you are not prepared though, evil day will come. It's not if it will come. It is when it will come. Evil day comes to everybody. No matter how anointed. No matter how anointed you are. 
No matter how long you have been a minister, no matter how long you have been born again, evil day comes to everybody. You, you can pray from now to yesterday that is past. Evil day will still come. Don't you understand? You know? <laughs> he said, put on the old armor because it will come. That's why you need to be able to withstand. If it's not going to come, there's nothing, there, will, there will be nothing for you to withstand, to prepare for. He said, put on the whole armor of God because evil day will come. You know what the evil day, look, your own evil day might be somebody conspiring against you. Your evil day has come. They might even lie against you. Your evil day has come. You, you know, all kinds of complications can happen. Your evil day has come. People can misunderstand you. Evil day has come. They carry fake news, rumor about you. Evil day has come. You help people. They start paying you back with bad coin, with negative attitude. Evil day has come. So the Bible said, when your evil day comes, when that evil day is not your own, but the enemy brings it, he said you must put on the whole armor of God so that you are able to withstand. Because Proverbs said, the book of Proverbs said, in Proverbs 24 verse 10, Put Proverbs 24, verse 10. Put the King James part, please. You, you know, um, look at it. Proverbs 24, verse 10. Look at what it says. In Proverbs 24, verse 10. Uh, okay, this one is ESV. It said, okay, it said, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, that means the day your own challenge will show up. So, whether you are ready or not, your challenge will come. People will misunderstand you. If you are a pastor, people will get angry and leave your church. You can't stop people from going. Except you want to become a witch or a wizard. So you don't use witchcraft to hold everybody. Even Jesus, God Almighty in the flesh, the maker of the whole universe, the monarch himself, the blessed savior. In John chapter 6, they left him. After feeding them with uh, fish and bread, 5,000, they backed off. They left him. They left him. He was down to 12 men again. Just because he was telling them the truth. Evil day will come, no matter who you are. So the Bible said, when that day comes, the word day there means the season, the period. When it shows up or when it starts and you faint, it's because your strength is small. Put message translation of this proverb chapter 24, verse 10. God punish the devil. And Why should you collapse? Because right now you can't pay your children's school fees. Can't you see? The evil day has come. It's a season. Why, why are you giving up? Because you don't have a job right now. You are trusting God for a job, and there's no job yet. Whether there is a job or not, his name is. I will never change. He's called, he's called the faithful. He is too faithful to fail. Jesus is too faithful to fail. Too faithful to fail. Regardless of your condition, he's too faithful to fail. Look at this. The message translation of Proverbs 24 verse 10. He said, if you fall to pieces, if you fall to pieces in crisis, he said, there wasn't much in you in the first place. That's the reason. I like this transition. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, if you fall to pieces in crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. You are a featherweight. It just shows that you, are, you have always been a featherweight. So the immediate condition or challenge now has revealed your weight level. Simple. Why should it be because you don't have money to pay us rent? You're always sick. You're always worried. Your blood pressure is up. You're having headache. You're feeling bad. You now hate everybody. You don't want to talk to everybody because you don't have a job yet. Because things are not happen, have not happened for you the way they are supposed to happen. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Before your need showed up, Jesus was and after your need are far gone, Jesus will be. And The Bible said if we deny him, 
He is too faithful. He cannot deny himself. He knows who he is. He knows his capacity. He knows what he can do. Hey, yeah, Agavada. The monarch of the whole universe. The emperor. Ah, sweet Jesus. Look, we are not serving him because what we expect to happen has happened. We are serving him because there is no other apart from him. We have reached last bus stop. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega and the in between. Glory be to God. So there's no turning back. There's no going to turn to the right or left. It is to look to Jesus. We 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 look to Ayadagazataba. We look to Jesus. And Jesus alone. We are stress free. We are stress free. Who cares how many times people disappointed you? Jesus is constant. Who cares how many times you were rejected? Is it Jesus that was not rejected? The Bible calls him, the Bible calls him a man of sorrow. Many sorrows. Rejected of men. Despised. Ah! Acquainted with grief. Yet we did esteem him. Oh! We esteem him not. He said there was no beauty that we should behold him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. And with his stripes... We are healed. Ah, sweet Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Oh, I feel the goodness of the Holy Spirit all over me right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Your consistency, your faithfulness does not have part two. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look, he's too faithful to fail you. He's too faithful to fail you. It's the devil that is only trying to romance you through your emotion, turn your heart back to Jesus. He will never fail you. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. That you may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. Once you understand that, you can say it boldly. Jesus will help me, no matter what. Jesus will help me. 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 He said, if you, if you fall to pieces in crisis, when your season comes, when your season of challenge comes, if you fall to pieces, if you fall apart, he said, then there wasn't much to you in the first place. There was nothing in you. You were paperweight before. You were paperweight. You know, you have not gained weight in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. It's just that you are paperweight. You need to build your weight in the spirit. Build your wit. You know? So I'm going to show you there are two things that you need to regularly submit yourself or give yourself to to build your weight in the realm of the spirit. Two things. There are two things. Two vital things. Two major things that you need to submit yourself to to build your capacity in the realm of the spirit. So that when the evil day comes, when the season comes, that people will misunderstand you. People will gossip you. People will pay you back evil for your good. Whatever it is, or you lost something, for you not to fall apart, there are two things. And these two things are very simple. Number one, is the word of God. Aha. Some of you will think I'm going to tell you. Number one is uh, look to the sky every, every morning by 5.30 a.m. And as the dew is coming down from heaven, something good will be happening. No, that's, that, all that one is hogwash. The truth is that you need to build your weight in the spirit against the evil day that will eventually show up. It will show up. It will come. It will eventually show I'm telling you, even in marriage between husband and wife, evil day shows up. In education, it shows up. In business, it shows up. In whatever area, it shows. At a given time, it will show. So the way to, one of the best ways to first of all, build your weight. 
So that in the day of that evil, the season, the period of those challenges, you don't fall apart. Is that you need to build yourself in God's word. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. See Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. It's there. That's what the Bible said. Put Colossians 3 16 quickly please. No, put King, uh, King James. Colossians 3 16. He said, let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. The word wisdom means applications. The more you fill yourself with the word of Christ, you will get to a point. It will be over, overflowing. It will bubble inside of you. When challenges come, you will apply it. You will throw it at whatever the challenge. You will throw it. You will throw it. One of which is Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing. You need to store yourself with it. Fill yourself until you, full, you are full to the, over, to, uh, 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 to the brim. Fill yourself with the truth of the, of the word of Christ. He didn't say with the word of Moses. He said with the word of Christ. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Not the word of Moses. Not the word of David. Not the word of Elijah. Because some people now, they carry that one. They are, running, they are always running to Old Testament to go and look for what word. No. He said the word of Christ. The, the word that that promotes Christ in your heart, that reveals Christ and his nature and character in your heart. You see, Jesus is the character of God. So if you can know Jesus, his word, have his word dwell in your heart, the nature of God will play out through you easily. Look, he said, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It needs to do, that needs to rest undoubtedly in your heart. Paul said, I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm persuaded. That he's able to keep that which I've committed into his hand. Second, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. He said, I'm persuaded. You can't convince me that this my condition will remain like this forever. You can't. I refuse to be convinced. Because that's what the devil used to lure people. But I'm persuaded. He said, For the which cause also I suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. I am persuaded. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He will keep me. You need to stuff yourself. Store the word of Christ in you until it overflows. Look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. Let, let, let me even delve into that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. God punished the devil. See Bible. See truth. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Look at it. He said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Anybody who believes in Jesus Christ, that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, is born of God. So do you believe in Jesus Christ? He said, then you are born of God. He said, now that you are born of God, look at it. Go to verse 4 immediately. Verse 4. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, he said, for whosoever or whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You need to stuff yourself with this truth. I am born of God because I believe in Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm a world overcomer. Regardless of my condition, I'm a world overcomer. You will see that when, you're, when, that, when the evil day comes, you are, you are fully armed. You are well dressed. Woo! You are not a paperweight. You are a heavyweight. A lot of ministers, a lot of pastors read Bible only for them to preach. They are not studying the word to store in themselves until it becomes a character for them. Woo! Glory be to God. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. That's why you see some ministers, when situations happen, they fall apart. He's a minister. He's a man of God. A great man of God. When he prays for people, things happen. When he gives prophecy to people, things happen. When he command the devil to go, things happen. 
you know, when he stretches out his eyes, you see people falling. But he himself, when things happen, he falls apart. Don't you get it? Man of God, you should know that before you became a man of God, you, you were first of all a believer. So the same principle applied to you. The same principle applied to you. What, whatever it is, you are ministering to the people. Make sure that you can minister it to yourself first. Otherwise, you are a failure at work. I'm sorry to say that. You are a failure at work. I have to close. Time is gone. Oh my God. I have so many things to share. But let me just quickly get you to the second part. You know, because, or, or let me show you this one. Quick. He said in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, he said, For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It can, differ, can help you to differentiate between your spirit and your soul. So that your emotion does not begin to run a wire. Look at it. He, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. He said, for the word of God, the word of God is quick. It's alive. The word quick means alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul. Which is your mind and your emotion. And... The spirit. So the word of God, as you fill yourself with the word of God, with the knowledge of the word of Christ, the word of Christ dwells in you. It will help you to separate clearly between your spirit and your soul. So when things happen, your soul, when you want to start bouncing because conditions are not right, your spirit is able to release energy to bring your soul back in line through the knowledge you have fed your soul with. Woo! Are you getting that? That's why he wants you to be filled with the word of Christ. He said the entrance of the word. Give that light and understanding to the simple. It helps to separate you, your spirit and your soul. And give clarity in the midst of your challenges. Number two. Now that you have the word stored up inside of you. Number two. You must engage the weapon of prayer. You know the problem with majority of our grace uh, people in this New Testament is that they study so much of grace, they become so lazy to pray. If you do not engage the instrument of prayer, if you are too lazy to pray, the grace message you have heard, the grace message you are preaching will become a burden to you. It becomes powerless. It becomes of none effect. Jesus said in John chapter 6, in verse 63, put G uh, John chapter 6, verse 63. See what Jesus said. This is Jesus talking. In John chapter 6, Verse 63. He said, it is the spirit that quickens. The word quickens means to supply or to give life. It is the spirit that gives life. The spirit gives life. So he said, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I, Jesus, speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So Jesus is saying, don't take one and leave the other. Don't become too worded and you are too lazy to pray. Don't focus too much on prayer and you abandon the word. The two of them goes pari pasu, hand in glove. As you feed yourself with the word of God, you engage the instrument of prayer, our legato, to secure your environment through your fellowship with the Father. I, I study a lot when it comes to study. Ah, I love to study because that's my responsibility. I'm called to minister Christ, but to study to better myself and to better my audience. But you know what? I pray. Ah, I can pray. It's not boasting. I pray. I spend time. I do pray. I do pray. I spend time to pray. Because that's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible said. In Matthew 26, verse 24, Jesus said, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. 
In Matthew 26, verse, 20, verse 40, 40, 41. That you have to hurry up. I've, I've, I've finished spending my time, but I just want to quickly add this. In Matthew 24, I mean 26, 26, verse 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. Look at what Jesus said. This is a direct instruction from Jesus. In Matthew 26, verse 41. Look at, he said, watch and pray that you, that you enter not into temptation. The, the word enter not means so that when temptation comes, you don't fall. You don't fall apart. You have to pray. There is a need for prayer. Uh, everything is by grace. Everything but don't pray. <laughs> don't pray. You will see that the grace becomes a body. Grace can become a body. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus, the Bible says he's speaking proverbially. He said, Men ought to pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men. That means prayer is a sign of taking responsibility for yourself. Men ought always, not boys. Men, regardless of your age, it doesn't matter. Whatever your age, men ought always to pray. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. Because it's not only men that pray, as, as in human. Women pray, children pray, adults pray. He said, but prayer is a sign of taking responsibility. So, you ought to be a responsible person. Take spiritual responsibility for yourself. Don't abandon your life. Don't abandon the outcome of your condition by going to look for one prophet somewhere to give you prophecy. To go and look for one man of God to pray for you somewhere. Am I making sense to somebody here? Engage yourself in prayer. Paul, look at Paul. Said the, said the same thing to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Look at what Paul said to Timothy. That he hurry up. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Look at what Paul said to him. Clearly, Paul gave an instruction. Outstanding instruction to his son, Timothy. Look at what he said. He said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Wherever you are, you must pray. You must pray. Wherever you are, you must pray. Wherever you are, whether you are in the government house or you are in the hut in the village, you must pray. Whether you are in America or the backside of one desert, you must pray. It is a must. It's a responsibility that is committed to you to exercise yourself gloriously in, in communicating with God. Stop handing over your responsibility to others. Stop it. Stop it. Learn to spend time in prayer yourself. God wants you to pray. He wants to hear you. As a matter of fact, God wants to hear your request through prayer. He doesn't want to hear your request through grumbling. He doesn't want to hear your request through confession. Uh, I confess that the Lord has heard me and the Lord will do it for me. No, no, no. no. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible did not say God will hear your request through confession. No. You can confess from now to tomorrow about your request. That's not what the scripture says. In Philippians chapter 4, the Bible said very clearly in verse number 6. Philippians 4, 6. That they could quickly. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I've really exceeded my time. But I need to give you this. This is very important. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Not through confession. It's through prayer. By prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for helping me. Send me help. Help me somebody to help me financially. Send me. You have to pray. God hears your request. He waits. You see, your prayer is where your request is written, not on paper. Carrying paper about to different churches. A prayer request. As everybody come with your prayer request. Can't you see? The only person that is doing well is your bishop. It's your geo. They're just carrying prayer requests about. Fully, you know, everybody's fooling themselves. God did not ask you to bring prayer requests. He said, bring your prayer. If on your prayer, write your request. So our requests as believers are to be written on our prayer. 
I stop you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord give you understanding of his word in the name of Jesus. I know you have understanding because this thing is very important. Is it 1 Thessalonians chapter 1? He said, pray without ceasing. That's what he said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, pray without ceasing. And, uh, 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 and in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he said, praying always with all prayer in the spirit. So, learn to pray in tongues all the time. Don't wait for people to be there before you start praying. You don't need to lock up yourself somewhere before you start praying. Even while you are at the bus stop, man, da da da, hey, da 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 you can pray underneath your breath. But make sure you pray. Engage yourself in prayer. Stop looking. Stop, you know, spending all your time just gossiping. You know, telling you are the one that knows who is a sinner and who is not a sinner, who is wrong and who is right. You are the one, I'm a boy, you are the one carrying people's story about instead of you to pray. And that's why you, you, you can't manage your life yourself, you know, especially some women. Have you seen some ladies? You know, they can't hold a man down, they can't hold a husband, they can't hold a man. That's why nobody to marry them, you know, but they can complain. Talk about this person, talk about that person. Go and spend time in prayer. Husband will come, nonsense. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I have to stop. <laughs> I have to stop in Jesus' name. I love you and God bless you in the name of Jesus. But you know, we can't stop. We can't close the fellowship right now without asking you to give. I, I want to ask you, take up an offering and, you know, give. Send us offering. Be a part of what we're doing. Let God use you to be an encouragement to us, you know. And if you want to give, you know, can use your phone. You know, after this, uh, after watching this teaching, you know, or you can even stop right now and just do it. You know, use Zenit Bank, 1001-488-167. Zenit Bank, 1001-488-167. I trust the Lord Jesus that this teaching has, you know, done something inside of you. Please share it. Use it to encourage somebody. And may the Lord bless you for it in the name of Jesus. Well, until I see you in the next episode of our broadcast. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. And I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.